Okay. One second, I know. Let me see. Honor, honor everyone. Honor to the to everyone that is watching. Honor to everyone that is joining the chat. Honor to you all. Let me say peace, love, light to you all. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you all are getting ready to enjoy the other two days out of the week, your Saturday and your Sunday. And may those two days and the rest of the week, year, month, year, you know, lifetime goes well and wonderful for you guys. All right. Uh, let me see something. Hold on to Alex. All right, so it's people coming in now. Uh, they were de they were delaying. <laughs> they were, you know, they were delaying the the, the live feed. They were trying to delay. It. This week is the first week that I actually get the the notification right away. You now they delayed. No, today. <laughs> well, I got the notification just now. Just now, right? Yeah, they delayed it. It's all right though. But yeah, peace, peace, everyone. Uh, Rudy L. Abashango, Anna, Anna, thank you, thank you. Brother Corey Sly, Laron Jones, Sister Jazzy Zafox, Guac Kamali, Anna, Anna, thank you, thank you. Shatahaya Bell, Anna, Anna, brother, Anna, Anna. All right, so we're here with uh, Brother Malkia, Brother Alex, and Sister Malkia of the Yenkunkun Pikibo. Um, our Arawakan brothers and sisters uh, from Shyamaika. Uh We're reintroducing them to everyone so that everyone could um, get familiar with our brothers and sisters for they are they have started something monumental and invited um, I, myself, and other parties into what they have started. And I thank them for inviting me to be a part of this um, monumental journey that they have started. And we are um, to put in the work to make sure that this gets um, lifted up off the ground the right way, a strong foundation. Um, this will be something to represent the Western Indians, Indians of the West for generations to come. Um, this is for those who are serious, you know, it, 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 it takes, uh, um, it's going to take the village. He, he, like how they say, it takes a village to raise a child. It's going to take the village to make this um, start off on the right foot with strength, with the power that it needs to be started off with. Um, so, you know, again, we are speaking of the West Indian Tribal Society. And um, we are speaking of the importance of having the people behind um, the society to help push um, the society, promote it, uh, get it out there to make sure that um, our people know that we have um, folks who are dedicated to um, secure something to where they can feel comfortable and safe, all right? Um, that there are folks out here that is willing to fight for you. There's folks out here that is willing to um, secure resources for you and properly educate you on the structure of what is going on here today and teach you and educate you on how to keep and uphold a family structure also as well. And to teach you how to be independent in most cases from the corporate medical world. Uh, and you know how to properly educate the young ones that are coming up to make sure that they um, go without want of resources uh, in the future and onward, okay? So here again, I introduce from the Yen Kun Kun Pikibo, our Arawakan brother and sister, brother Alex and sister Melkia. Go ahead, brother and sister. Go ahead. Greetings, greetings, one and all. Greetings. Greetings, everybody. Glad to be here 
Everybody hearing us all right? Yeah, man. If you guys can right. hear, just press. If you guys can hear in the chat, just press one if you guys can hear. Yeah, that's good. All right, beautiful. All right, so, yeah, I'm Alex. You know, and I'm here with my wife, Malkia. And as except we are of the Yenkongo Pekigo, you know, the, the so-called Maroons, you know, we're members of that bloodline. And, you know, we have always been on a mission, you know, even, what, two years ago when we first came on this platform, you know, and, and started to speak, you know, we have always been on a mission for the betterment of our people. But since then, you know, we have had quite a bit of, what you say, ups and downs and a lot of trials and tribulations. And one thing rang home and rang short was that we could not abandon our people outside of the so-called maroon bloodline <laughs> because as it is a very close-knit family group and not everybody on the island is a part of that and it's just one set of people yeah. exactly it's just one set of, of indigenous you know descendants of this island or descendants of the original inhabitants as we prefer to say of this island um now in seeing that we ask ourselves the question, what would be the best way to incorporate all our brothers and sisters who we love so much that are out there? And how can we prevent them from being left out? How can they uh, benefit from the rights of so-called indigenous peoples? You know, how can they get back to their center and how can they become a part of a village structure again so we decided upon consultation with one of our trusted brothers and that would be american arox he is a man of great knowledge and he dedicates himself to learning all he can it's a real pity that he is not able to make it today but you know it's for a good reason mm -hmm. but to, he said to us what about the trust? What do you know about the trust? And Iron Malkia had been reading for some time. And we had realized that the trust may be a vehicle to create a body that would have been recognized in both the, the colonizer system and in our traditional way of doing things. It was sort of a, a middle ground so that we could interact and to, to protect our, our, our freedom from a from forced assimilation and you know a way to, to represent our issues as a, as a unit so we just found that this was a good way to come together a good way to, to organize ourselves and so we're doing it for you know the future generations of indigenous people like ourselves because a lot has happened since colonization. It was terrible, you know, to be honest. It had a profound impact on people all over the Americas. Because genocide. And exactly. And I mean, not just because colonization didn't just happen in the Americas, you know, it happened in pretty much everywhere in the world, right? There was an attempt at, at, at domination and invasion of indigenous peoples all over the world. So, but we, you know, have come together for the interest of our American ancestors. You know, the, 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 there isn't really much of a voice for indigenous people on this side of the world. And I mean, of course, yes, there are some people fighting the good fight, you know, in, in, in other parts of the Americas. But for us... In, in the Caribbean. Yes, for us in, in the Caribbean, you know, it's, 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 it's very much lacking. So this is one of the, the biggest motivators as to why we, we decided to come together in this way. Okay. Right, now, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. 
the trust is appropriate because through the vehicle of the trust, one can have a body corporate, as it is called, which is literally just a body of individuals coming together to cooperate <clears throat> for a cause. And there is no need for one to register within any colonizer system for a trust to be seen as valid. Now, what this means is that you don't have to be, your, your body corporate does not have to be brought to life by the operations of the state. You, as an individual, a human being first, man and woman, and uh, the descendants of the original people where, wherever you're from, you can give life to your own entity. As people, we can come together. Exactly. Know, as people, we can invest our personal freedoms into something, into a cause. So this, this, is, this is just what we've done. And our aim really is to make things better. Because for generations, things have just gotten worse and worse. You know, our, our culture in the Americas has been slowly eroding. And if something isn't done, you know, it, it might reach a point where it may become irreparable. So somebody needs to do something. And we, we definitely, we genuinely and sincerely believe that it's our calling to do so, you know. Of course, and the ancestors are begging for their children to come up and take up their birthright. And it is through this instrument, this trust, that we found it would be best to make our land claims, okay, our, our claims for our rights as a body of people. In, individually, you do have your rights, but as a collective, you're much stronger. And there is, there is more reason for people to pay attention to you if you're not by yourself. And this is what we need to get uh, an understanding on. You know, we, our people have for too long allowed personal differences to get in the way of the business that is directly in front of them. And it means that we have and to put that's, ourselves that's, aside. That's also one of the greatest effects of colonization, you know. The, the, the difficulty, yeah, man, the, the difficulty in us coming together because that's, that's one of the things that the colonizers this you know, attempted to destroy and did actually destroy in, in, in some places. You know, our people, the people, our, our ancestors, the original people of the Americas, they were strong as a body. You know, community was everything. Family was everything. Clan, kinship was everything. And over the over time, you know, generations have, have, have come and gone and I find that, especially in a lot of the communities, there's no love in the communities anymore. And if we don't do something and come together and at least find, we need to find somebody to love, guys. Like, whether it be your family members, your friends, your kinship groups, whoever it is, you need to find people that you love and, and work together, right? Nurture that love, cultivate that love. Because, you know, it, it's not just plants that you cultivate, guys. Love is one of the things that, you know, demand, demands a lot of... And you cultivate good relationships. Exactly. And you, you look into yourself, and when you can see your neighbor reflected in yourself, when you can see yourself reflected in your neighbor, then you know that you will have to, as who they call Jesus said, do unto others as he would have them do unto you. This is the law. And this is the culmination of the law. And this is true common law. And as, as the original people of the land, we have to remember our obligation to one another to treat each other as if it is yourself. To treat your brother or your sister as if you're dealing with yourself. And this is one of the greatest, most profound effects of colonization. We have been caught up in a state of depression where 
or people are willing to even kill themselves, take their own lives. So if our people are in that kind of situation, how can they love when they even hate themselves? And we, we should definitely take these these, these things as, as alarms. You know, when we see certain things happening, it means that it, it's time to do something. So we here, we're trying to do something. We're trying to, to go to the south, connect to our, our relatives in the south, learn that which we, we've been prevented from, from learning, you know, that which we've been separated from. Right. A lot of those old ancestral ways, the, the herbs, the, 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 the values and, and, and things that would that really shape our worldview as indigenous people. Some of these things we need we need to go and, and learn these things. We need to find out what kept these people together, right? What were the bonds that, that, that kept traditional societies together? We need we need to really go and meditate on some of these things. You know, the traditional food ways, because a lot of people, I find that we are eating ourselves sick, right? Some of us are eating ourselves to death. And a lot of times it's because of, you know, colonization has resulted in some people don't even know how to prepare the traditional foods anymore. You know, the, the good old home cooked food that's good for you. Some people don't know to make that anymore. So... It's important that you know, everybody learns how to do these things and a lot of this knowledge, you know, and it's not just food and, 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 and stuff like that. It, it's an entire body of knowledge that's just waiting for us, you know, and so let me jungle. let me ask you guys a question, yeah. Why is it important for folks to get back to their ancestral ways or try to get back in tune with their ancestral ways. Why is that important to for the children and for the parents of today's generation and bringing forth tomorrow's generation? Why, why, why not just get comfortable within this system right here? Well, to be honest with you, brother, we're at war. And the enemy has the greatest advantage in that the enemy knows why they are fighting because they have preserved their identity. They know who we are and why they are fighting us. We have forgotten who we are and why there is a war we don't even remember that there is a war and that that war never stopped. A lot of times we look and we see the oppression happening out there in the world and it just reinforces that, yo, something is happening in the world. Something has been happening for a few years now and it's important that people really dig deep and look back. You know, it's important that we look back to, 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 to connect the dots and see why is it that things are happening today and how is it that we can make a difference for the future? What, what, what route should we take for the future? If you don't know where you're coming from, you can't, you can't know where, you're, know where going. you're going. And the problem is that this disconnection with the past and with the ancestral legacy has created a mental illness in our people. Um, there, is a, there is a prominent scholar from the University of Toronto M. Lois Provost, and she described it as a zombification of the Arawakan peoples of the Caribbean. <clears throat> we, no longer we no longer represent ourselves as through our Arawakan identity. We no longer remember our rich heritage and culture and history. And we no longer remember why we and this land are one and inextricable. And this is why it's really important for us to really go back, right? Trace the steps back and see what happened. Try to find out everything because how is it that we're going to be able to go forward? A lot of people, you know, their, their, their family would have been highly connected to a particular place. You know, just living in that one area would greatly inform their, their way of life and who they are as a people. And, in some situations, people have lost their, their lands or have been forcibly removed. And 
that 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 something like that would be really scarring to to their who they are as a person, you know, as as weird as their self confidence in their identity and and their heritage. And so it's important that we remedy things by, or at least try to remedy, try to make some reconciliation by just trying to look back and see how we can reconcile the past with the future. Now, what what? What would you say to parents who um who are looking to homeschool their children, not only in back into the ancestral ways, but to prepare them even for this world that's out there? Because even though we are going back to our ancestral ways, there's there's a there's a far um um this globalistic, this corporate society has been really deeply rooted and embedded within our um, uh, psyche or within our society. So how would you advise or advise parents who are looking to homeschool their children, how to balance out the two to prepare their children for the ancestral ways and even the corporate world? I would advise the parents to first educate themselves. We have been given an abbreviated education system with which to basically baffle in life. We have been ill-prepared to take on this so-called brave new world that we've been thrust into without our consent. And the greatest way that a parent can fight this war on behalf of their children, whether already brought forth onto this plane or yet to be, is to educate themselves. You have at your disposal with the same internet that you're using to listen to this live, millions of books on law, history, culture, food, science, engineering, medicine, everything. And they're free. They're free ebooks. You can go and download, right? You can do online courses in which you will learn law, you will learn banking, you will learn finance, you will learn real estate, you will learn indigenous worldviews, you will learn human rights laws, anything that you want to learn. And once you have equipped yourself, then you can be the teacher for your children. And you need to also align yourself properly with the indigenous worldview, the one that belongs to your people. So for those who are from the Arawakan persuasion like ourselves, it is vital that if we want to get back to ancestral ways as well, that we align ourselves with the proper worldview so that when we're instilling our children with values, these are values that are in line with the land that we're from, with the soil that we were born out of, and not a foreign worldview that is irreconcilable with the soil that we're from. And so therefore it instills within us a mental disorder in which we feel like the only way we can truly live and live well is by leaving the land of our origin. It is important that we, if we want to be teachers of our children, it is important that we first change our mindset. A lot of us are walking around with colonial baggage and it's very important that we shed it. And we definitely need to be mindful of the kind of education that we're giving our children because it's definitely important that we teach our children about land management, estate management, you know, how, how, how to operate in the legal system because we can't want our children to be managers and entrepreneurs and then send them to get a worker education. So it's definitely important that we first educate ourselves on the things that we, our children need to know and make sure that we impart it onto them. And if it is that we individually, personally, might not have the necessary expertise to pass it on, pass on that kind of information, seek specialists, 
seek people who you know are the best of the best and make sure your children meet those people make sure that the, those are the kind of people that your children are, are being mentored by make sure that you expose your children to people who you would like them to look up to and emulate because the company that you keep informs who you are as a person you know the, the, the company that you keep and they can either encourage you or they can tear you down so it's very important that that's the kind of company that you encourage your children to keep and this is the this is the focus of the west indian tribal society because first of all one must recognize that a society is a group of individuals who have come together for one key purpose the purpose that is important to them what they want to pursue and if we are people who are serious about pursuing our ancestral ways and pursuing a better way of life in the lands that we originate from then it is very important that we align ourselves with others as my wife said that are on the same path the West Indian Tribal Society was created so that for those who are unable to do it on their own and you know you should never want to walk this road on your own that there would be a support group a support system where in which we would have the proper curriculum the proper recipes the proper spiritual practice the proper books and the proper notes and the proper images that would be used to educate our young ones and even some of our elders who lack it. And I mean, even in these modern times that we are in now, it, I believe that we should take advantage of the technology that we have around us, available to us in even the preservation of our culture because you know, some of us still have our grandparents and some of us still have some old family members or, you know, people around us that, that still know the things they yeah. And we can use technology, say, even note taking, recording, videoing and get some of these information from our loved ones and have them for the children afterwards to be able to see. You know, it, it's very important that we do our best because, listen, we can't do anything about the ones before us, the mistakes that the ones before us made. What we, we can learn from those mistakes. Exactly. We can learn from them and we can try our best as the present to do better for the future. No. And you see, if we play our thing right, it's the next generation. We're not going to afford them, but they go better than we. Now, how, 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 how are some of the ways can we learn? and build uh, and, re and restructure back from the mistakes of the ancestors? Well, the first step is to learn what those mistakes were. The first step is to not get tired of reading and to not get tired of reading some old dusty books as well. Some old books with some hard to read text. That's where our ancestors' mistakes are documented and even their triumphs as well. We need to first educate ourselves there. And then we need to recognize that there is a system that was put upon us. Mm -hmm. And we need to reconcile with that. And then we need to recognize that now we live in a, a rare time, one in which we can learn the ways of the colonizer. This didn't happen before. It's freely available to us now how to create a family trust, a living trust. You know, how to how to deal with precious metals, how to you can purchase seeds online now, any kind of seed now that you yep. can grow and, and, and grow your own food. It's even online how you can make certain kind of sustainable housing. Exactly. You know, so a lot of things, you know, is we need to just look into ourselves and what we can do and make up our mind whether or not we, we're prepared to really do certain things and execute them, mm -hmm. right? And if we're willing to work hard to make things better for the future. Go spend some time in the country, 
you know, go spend some time with the man who nobody really cares about, that bushman, that farmer, who would appreciate a little helping hand in his field for those who are still in the island. If you visit, try to even spend a few days with such an individual, and there's some powerful women who do that too right and learn those traditional ways before they die out because there has been a breakage in the in a link in the chain in which the knowledge is going to die and not go into the next generation if we don't apply ourselves listen the race of our ancestors is happening the relay is happening and they're ready to pass the baton to us we need to just make sure that we don't jump it. Right? We need to make sure that we're in place to receive it. Exactly. And know how to receive it. Because even in a relay race, there is technique. You can't look behind you. You have to look in front of you at all times. And you have to trust your ancestors and know that they will pass the button. You can't be impatient. Because you're working with the earth and the earth has her own clock. And so therefore, you can't be impatient, but you cannot be lax. You must be ready. You must be aware so that when that button comes to you, you can receive it. Now, let me ask you this. We know the effects of colonization on the family, on the household structure. And it has left um, many single parents uh, households, right? Um, how can one, a single father, a single mother, uh, uh, even those who adopt, um, how can one use the indigenous ways to mend back a single parent household to being a two parent household to creating that strong um, bond? Well, it's going to be difficult, you know. There is no, there is no surefire way of, of sorting that out. I mean, if I would say it is because of my, my personal family legacy that I had the drive to get married from early and to settle down and to run my life on a certain course. I was, I believe that I was called by the Almighty. I believe that I was called by the ancestors to take up this work of my ancestors and to be someone who could even try to clear out the way for the, the, the next generation to have an easier way to walk on. So it won't be easy. I think the greatest way that we may be able to reconcile with such a situation is for us to try to come together in a group in which men and women are involved and we decide to put aside all foolish divisive things and to take up a family structure preferably people who are not related by blood the reason being <clears throat> is because sometimes you have to turn a new page and leave behind some of the bad practices, some of the bad memories that, you know, re would really cloud your judgment. Sometimes you have to start anew, start afresh. I mean, if, if, if you're a single parent and you have a great relationship with your family, that's awesome because family support is definitely important. Mm -hmm. It's important that we nurture our bonds with each other. But... If it is that you know you have certain people that are, are toxic or they're not they're not helping helping you grow or, or helping to build helping to build you as a person, then it's really important that you do yourself a favor and your children a favor and not let negativity be a part of your family legacy. Because take for example the current plan of the West Indian Tribal Society. Um, the listeners, you know, the listeners ex can tell you, we speak daily about the creation of our village. Mm -hmm. We're 100 percent serious about it, and no, we're not related by blood, and no, 
in some cases, you no, know, we, we didn't grow up together or anything like that. But sometimes, you know, there comes a time in every human being's life where you're at a crossroads. You know, what do I do next? And the thing about it is that when you come upon an awakening, as we have, when you come upon that information that opens your eyes to the truth of how this system works, you have two choices. You either turn back to the ways that you used to live and try to be blind, or you go forward with that knowledge and in the direction of indig the indigenous life and the indigenous mindset, one can only see coming together as a village, as a kinship group, as being the only solution in order to gain independence, in order to gain a peace of mind. It may not be perfect. And once that, that leg of the journey starts, it may be an uphill journey. But we must try. We owe it to our ancestors and to the future generations to try. I mean, we're not encouraging people to just go and abandon your family, right? Again, we definitely encourage people to nurture their family bond and see how best they can build their family and improve their family, right? We encourage the men at home to love your women and treat them well. Love your children, treat them well. And we encourage the women at home, love your men, treat them well, right? We encourage the women to treat other women well, right? Because we need we need us women to start being more kind to each other. Because I find that, you know, in a lot of situations, women are not as kind to one another as we could be, right? Be. As we should be. And I think that's definitely something that we need to work on. We need to work on and our bonds as, as families and, and, and as a community, right? So it's definitely one of, not one of those abandon your family type things, right? As a matter of fact, we, we, we really push family, right? It's just that we have to be more inclusive because we're all human, right? We mm -hmm. all have our own struggles and we need to be there for one another. And one last point on it is that within the West Indian tribal society, we've come up with a structure in which what we encourage is that for those who are becoming members of the West Indian tribal society, that you try to create a family trust first. And the reason for that is it will help you to draw uh, your blood relatives together even if all of them may not be willing to live on the village lands, you know, that we eventually are aiming to, to acquire and to claim, um, they will at least be a part of a group that out there will be a shield protecting them from that assimilation that we are so afraid of and so wary of, that assimilation that strips culture and identity. They will not have to necessarily get a bank account or any of those things because the trust will take care of them on that level. And also, you know, we, we, we definitely encourage that when you come together as a family, right? It, it's not just you, you bring your family as well. Involve your family. In everything, we encourage everybody to involve your family because that is one of the biggest problems. That is one of the biggest effects of colonization. And that is the destruction of indigenous families and the family unit, the family structure. You know, I find that a lot of, a lot of people, as, as soon as, as, as they reach a certain age, you know, they don't want to have anything to do with their family anymore. And, you know, given to all kinds of conflicts and, and problems, guys, we need to put the conflict aside. We need to realize that we are all human. We are all on this earth. And we all have an obligation to this earth and to each other. And that's another point that, 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 that we, we need to focus on as well. And that's the environment. Because if nobody's paying attention, 
pretty soon we won't have anywhere else to live you know if 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 if, if we destroy the land or, or or allow the land to be destroyed the way of life the natural traditional ways of life that, that that's intrinsic to our identity as indigenous people you know that will become compromised if the land is destroyed so that is also another big part of, of our struggle how, you know protecting since you mentioned that right how important is the land to our spiritual mental and physical um well-being well the land that you are from the land that is under your feet mm -hmm. that soil and those minerals within the soil are in the food that you eat and when you eat that you know from even before your birth your mother is consuming that it makes you Part, it makes you the same as that soil. It's the same chemical composition that makes up that soil, that makes up your bones and your skin and your flesh. The earth is our mother, and that is the relationship that we as original peoples have with this earth. The earth is our mother, and just as how you love and you respect and you treat your mother well, is the same way that you must treat the earth because she has birthed all of us. She has brought forth all of us. Yes, and she sure. brings forth our sustenance as well. And we are connected to this earth just as how you may attach a USB cable to a computer. Information yes. can be shared between you and the earth. You can learn from the earth. The earth has secrets. The earth connects all of us, whether plant or animal life, whether microscopic or macroscopic life. And it is the earth that we all have in common. No matter the, the cultural background or ethnic background, one thing is for sure, we are all of this earth and we are all from this earth. And so it is, it is our church, it is our temple. It is our spiritual sanctuary. The oldest trees, the shade that they give is more valuable spiritually than any ancient cathedral. It is, we have been provided for by the creator in order that we may give glory to the creative power and to give glory to the beauty of creation. And we have been given the earth in order to do that upon. So the earth and our spiritual system as indigenous people are inseparable. So would you say then an attack on the earth or, or an attack on indigenous people was is an attack on the earth and vice versa? Of course. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay, that, I lost a bit there. Of course, um, an attack on the earth, just as how when you attack, if you cut a tree, there may be birds nesting in it. You know, there may be ants living in it. There may be wasps or whatever living in it. That attack <clears throat> is also extended to indigenous people. Because we are no different from the animals that live upon the land. We're just, we're just, as they, they say, you know, more complex. You know, and what that means is that being that the earth is our home, an attack upon anyone's home would be an attack on their integrity, their family life, and who they are as an individual. So, yes, of course. An attack upon the indigenous people is an attack upon the earth because we're all part of the earth. Mm -hmm. We're all part of the earth and we depend on the earth for our sustenance to this day. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I look at everything that's going on in today's society. And even before I was even here in this physical realm, 
when I look back at the past and they say the actions of people shall show you who they are and righteous men and women shall stand out and show you who they are. And when people look in today's society today and to show you, matter of fact, to put it like this, to show you how much there's a disconnect from people who are indigenous or people in general from this earth. There are people that could just stand by and watch a man build a factory on the waterfront and that factory will be leaking all sorts of radiation and waste into the waterfront, which is the drinking water that sustains, because you know they say water is um, the key to life while water is the life source. Right? Of course. And people could watch that water be contaminated and listen to a, 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 a man come on television and tell them, oh, it's not that serious, but make sure that every household has a filter on their pipe. And even though you filter the water, make sure to boil it also as well. And, <laughs> and they still look at that person as being for them and for the planet. Right. No, but that person, that person is a lunatic. That person is insane. And those are the people that people are voting for now. Lunatics. People who are mentally unfit. We need to wake up as a people and start realizing who we are. Right. A lot of people. A lot of people say, you know, know thyself, and it's important. It is important to know who you are. It is important to know where you're coming from because only when you who your people were only when you know the past then will you be informed as to who you are today and what you will write in tomorrow's history you know because i say all the time that we are the writers of tomorrow's history a lot of the things that we have passed down to us was because the ones before us did something right those are their stories, their actions. You know, that's that's the legacy that we have today, right? What will our legacy be tomorrow? What will our stories be to pass on to our children? Do you want to be in a position where when the next generation come and they hear about certain atrocities, they're going to ask, why didn't you do something? Why didn't you guys, you know, defend this thing better? If only we would have done something, we wouldn't be in this situation today. We're going to be held account to account if we don't do anything today because we are the keepers of tomorrow. So if we don't do something, everything that's being done is going to be on our head. So it is our moral responsibility to wake up and claim who we are, claim our right, claim our heritage, and act upon it. Now, what do you say about those people? Because you have people out there that's like this. That's that that says, well, what does it all what does all why does all of this matter? We're all gonna die someday. You know, why 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 fight for this? Why keep going? You know, uh, um why is this really important if you know it doesn't matter? You know what I mean? You have people out there that's like that. What what, what do you say to those people those type of people? But, you know, to be honest, there's always going to be some people that just can't bother, right? It's been like that in history, and it's like that today. And I'm sure in the future there's going to be a small subsection of people that's like that in the future as well. But let me tell you this. In the past, you know, when our ancestors was going through them things, Nanny went everywhere and she asks everybody to join in the fight and say let's come together and let's let let's fight you know we can really work together we can really do something a lot of people actually did tell her that they can't bother they right? rather to work than to fight they, they, they rather to work than to, 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 to work for for, for background and, and some people rather slavery right then that to fight to fighting was too much for them right so I'm not going to say that, you know, there will never be those people. There will be. But in nature, there is a balance.
comes to everything, right? So for those, for the ones who can't bother, there will be ones who can't. Mm-hmm. And it is, it, is, it is their legacy that will be strong in the future. And the thing is, is that as indigenous people, we don't believe that we are brought into a separate existence upon the, the you know, our first life event, our birth as it is called, um, we believe in reincarnation. We believe that we are the continuation of our of our ancestors' work. And mm-hmm. so therefore, if you consider that fact, you realize that uh, the people who have gone before that said that they couldn't care less, they, they couldn't bother, they are back again and they have to bother again, you know, and a lot of them are conscious of that, of being back, mm-hmm. and is the source of a great amount of, of depression. When you listen to the stories of people who are mentally ill, a lot of them are saying to you stuff like, oh, they've been here before, or, you know, they believe that they were brought on a spaceship or something like that. And a lot of that is just a description of the reincarnation process that they went through. I tell you, if you have something to learn, it's never gonna end like you're learning. Exactly. It's no. gonna keep going round and round and round. Right. I'm I am i am not sure if you guys are familiar with Jonah in, in the Bible story. When Jonah had a calling, Jonah had something that he was supposed to do and he tried to run away from it. And you know what Jonah ended up learning? That you can't run away from yourself. You can't run away from your purpose. And he ended up eventually Though he went through the whole process of being swallowed by a whale and all of that, he still ended up having to do what he was supposed to do. Still. And it's the same with us. So for those who don't care, uh, there's very little that we can tell you Uh, other than, you know, look within. All right, stick a pin in that right there, yeah? I'm going to ask that question right in a few. Let me introduce um, American Arawak. American Arak, welcome, brother. Welcome, welcome. Honor, honor, brother, honor. What's going on, people? Big up yourself. Um, big up the chat. Big up everybody. Thanks for viewing. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm not going to stay too long this time because I'm actually at the lake with my children. So <laughs> I'm trying to do some fishing. Eat them out of fish, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right. No problem. No problem at all. Yeah, but I just I just stopped by yeah. to say what's up and what's good with everybody. And um, I like the conversation so far. I was listening for a little bit. So unproductive, mm-hmm. you know. And this is the type of conversation we need to be having at all times. How to um, progress over people. Uh, nothing less, nothing more. If it's not about progress, then we're not supposed to waste our breath. You know, so I just like to say thank you all people for support the GoFundMe. For um, putting in here three cents or your four cents or your five cents or your ten cents, any amount of cents you put in there, we really appreciate love it, and it's, that's gonna go a long way with with what we're trying to do. So, as I said, I won't be staying long. Uh, he chipped out. He chipped out. Um. Uh, I want to big up everybody on the panel. All right, so, brother. So, all right. No respect. Yeah, man. And keep on spitting the fire. Always, brother. Always. All right. Thanks for passing through, brother. All right. Now, back to you now, brother Alex. All right? And Sister Mouse here. To those people who say, why does this matter? Do you feel like they are spiritually uh, um, not in tune with what is going on? And to those who will always, to, to those who would say um, they rather work and not fight, do you feel like they too are spiritually not in tune, disconnected from Mama Earth and the ancestors? Well- I think I think that their disconnection, even that disconnection that you speak of, is a symptom. This was not this was not the design of our ancestors. 
And when other people arrived on our shores and brought a foreign ideology, that was the beginning of a situation in which uh, this that this connection is just a manifestation of, right? And so I would say that yes, they are disconnected, but they are not just disconnected. They're not. It, it, that's not the cause. That's not the root. The root is the reason that they're disconnected. I mean, there are other factors out there at play. You know, we have to take into consideration that some of the food that, that that's available. You know, a lot of the, the the things out there are designed to disconnect us from the earth, from the spirit world, from our ancestors. A lot of these things it it, it by design. You know, a lot of these things it it, it designed to all we don't. You know, so that's why it's important that it becomes a lifestyle, right? Connecting to your heritage becomes a lifestyle. It's a it's, it's a complete way of life because all of these things have effects, you know. And if you live a balanced life, then everything else will balance itself right out. Right. So part of the work of the West Indian Tribal Society is to help people who know that something is wrong <clears throat> internally and externally to help them come to the center you know so for those who are not from our island you know maybe we can help you learn how to administrate your estate better you know maybe we can learn how maybe we can teach you how to you know expand your knowledge horizons you know as x said how to homeschool your children you know, how to deal with uh, legal matters concerning anything that's going on in your life. Maybe we could help you. Maybe we could point you in a direction of good books to read, etc. You know, so it, it's it's a lifelong mission that we've taken up. This will never stop. Yes, yes. And um, that is what I really hope and pray that a lot more of our people understand that this is not just a, 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 a moment in time journey. Once you start this journey, it's something that is gonna carry on into the next generation, the next generation after that, and the next after that, and onward and onward. Uh, sometimes you, even your children will pick up the mantle and keep that torch going. Just like when you see those Olympic athletes when they're running in the street with the torch and they pass it on to the next person. This is what this is. The only difference is this fire can't be out. It will never out. It will always be a flame lit in the hearts of us, within the core of us, waiting to blaze a, 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 a new trail for our young ones, for the young ones of our young ones also as well. And this is why it is important that the people of today wake up. For if you don't wake up today, for you, there will be no tomorrow. And the reason why I say that is because everything that is happening in the world today has always been a major eugenics movement to erase a particular set of people from the planet, okay? And if you don't wake up, you're not going to see yourself in the next 10, 20, 30 years. It won't happen. And if your mindset is, well, I'm going to sit at home and still let the next man go fight for me, and then after the fight is done, and if he wins the fight, come and tell him, yeah, 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 we did good. We did good? No, brother, you, you were not there. You sat at home. You went to the, the club. You went to the casino. You, 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 you rather had went to uh, uh, um, the mall and buy this $500 sneaker and so on and so on. I'm not telling one to what to do with their stuff. But what is what is important here is um, 
the temptations of the colonization that they put out there for you more important than your survival, than your children's survival, than to taste and, and, and have true freedom on your plate so you can have more than just a taste and the whole damn meal of true freedom. Hmm? Do you want to continue to have um, people run um, corporate schemes on you so that they could use it as a means to trick you into a mandated system to where they slowly but surely implement a mandate on this, a mandate on that. The next minute the mandate is going to be they have to put a needle in your arm and you have to take that needle. That's not true freedom. But when you go back to the ancestral ways and identify back as your ancestry with your indigenous um, ancestral ways, then you are not a part of the jurisdiction of this corporate system. So if you don't see that there's an importance or something important here to fight for, to invest in, to dedicate to your time and effort to, even if you don't wanna be a part of the West Indian Tribal Association, at least take the time out of your day to continue your studying, take the time out of your day to make sure that your children are properly um, educated and what's going on. Take the time out of your day to invest in something that you feel is going to help um, the people, which is going to in turn help you in the future, from here on out to into the future. Because at the end of the day, we all have been in a situation where we feel like we have no place to go, where we feel entrapped, like this is it. It has to be more to life, but what there is there more to life than I continuously have someone dictating something to me. You turn the corner here, there's an officer in your face dictating to you. Oh, you got to get off the street. Get off the street. Oh, 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 get out the subway. Oh, oh, where you going? Oh, and following you, your every movement. Then you have this politician on the TV dictating to you again. Right now, when you're going to go to the grocery store, now the grocery store people are dictating to you again because the, the, the heads of the corporate system had made it so. Right, but when you are indigenous, especially for those of you who are the original indigenous people of the Americas, you have uh, are no longer to be a part of the jurisdictional. Or, or, or society or construct of the corporation. They have no say so over you, but because you keep yourself mentally locked down and more in tuned with uh, um, these materialistic things or these, uh, what would you say, shallow things of the world, of what these supposed stars, real stars are in the sky. These folks that you see here on the soil, those th those people that you see here working with the corporation to mislead you, those aren't stars. Those are hollows. Those are entities without a soul. You want to be soulful? Come back home. You want to be you want to you want to be free? Come back home. Now, some people will say, "Well." Well, they got a military, or what? Do, what do we have? Or they'll say, "Well, well, what are we going to do to survive if we go back to being um, indigenous, or go or identify as being indigenous and, and segregate ourselves from this system? How will we be provided for? What will what will will happen or become of our children?" Right now, what, what, what do you guys say of that? Let me see if our brothers and sisters are still there. Come yeah, on, sir, sir, what do we have to say about that? Well, listen, at the end of the day, I can't really tell anybody why they should be motivated to want to take care of themselves and, and not depend on other people for their sustenance. I can tell you why I don't want to do that, why I don't want to depend on people, because the thing is, is that when they get tired of you, you know, when they feel that like they don't have enough, you know, and you're not and in, inside of that inner circle, you're going 
to get left out. And that's just the reality. And that's what's been happening to our people, especially nowadays. Uh, now our people are getting completely left out, completely cut out. All right. And it's being said that they died out. You know, anything that the so called states and things have to do and say to indemnify themselves from the responsibility to look after those who are true stakeholders in all of affairs that take place upon these lands in the Americas. We've been dispossessed of that. You know, so they've taken the decision that the original people and their descendants, they do not need, they do not require anything at all. You know, we should just work and just do what they tell us tell us to do. And, you know, just take or just take whatever hand that they deal to us. Exactly. With that, we don't demand anything that we're just willing to live under a tent or live under a tree. Right. As long as we still make it to work at eight o'clock in the morning, eight thirty, whatever, you know, that's fine for them as long as we keep the wheels turning on their machinery. They don't mm-hmm. care what happens to us, they don't care if we have to live in our cars. I don't care if we have to live, you know, under a bridge. Doesn't really matter. You know, I, I I do believe that we need we need to get back to our focus on people. Right? People matter, you know. And I find that especially in certain bureaucratic situations, there isn't that much focus on people. Like I know that a lot of people who are who, who, who go to work, you know, they have a job and a lot of their employers don't even care what, what's going on at home. They don't care what they have to go through at home. They don't care that, you know, you may have children at home or you, you, the child might be sick and you may need to take off from work tomorrow or maybe you just have different needs as a single mother or as a mom with several children or, you know, everybody is different. And this is why it's important that we have something that family oriented, that cares about each and every single member of the family, right? From the young ones, right? up to the old ones, you know, so if, if it is that you're not interested in, 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 in you know, community and, 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 and progress and development, then maybe this is not for you, but if it is that you're interested in our identity as a people, our heritage, if you're interested in what happens in the future, if you're interested to know, you know, and, and, and if, you, if you care about what happens to the children, several generations down the line or if you care what the earth is like when we're gone if you care any at all about a legacy about community about family about love about nature you know about spirituality if you care anything about anything at all about you know even following a creator knowing that this earth and each and every one of us was created if you don't care about any of these things, right, then maybe it's not for you. But if you do care, I suggest you take a second look, take a further look and try to see, you know, if this would be a good fit for you. You know, there's a question that I want to ask those naysayers. What did the colonizer bring with them? What did they have when they came here? Because, you know, it wasn't money. Right, because there was nothing to buy here. There were no shops or anything like that that you have now. So it wasn't that they came here with money. It wasn't none of none of the things that they came here with were necessarily of any great value to us, other than maybe like the beads and that sort of stuff that our people always loved and loved to make jewelry and adornments with. You know, they didn't bring much of anything with them. Okay, they were not thinking about what would happen when they came here. They had a plan. Okay, they had a plan, a thousand year plan, in some cases a two thousand year plan, mm-hmm. and, and, and maybe even not much longer than that. And they came here with the intention to execute that plan, and it was a single minded execution of that plan that they had planned now right. let me ask you now, something how much what's that? how much of that plan um consisted of making sure that 
that to break up the household of the indigenous man and woman and to segregate the I'm child. I'm not hearing you so well, brother. I You're not hearing me? Could you repeat, please? I said, how much of that plan, right? Do you, how much of that plan do you think was put into breaking up the indigenous household and to segregate the children from the household and the parents from the household? How much, you're not hearing me? We're not hearing you, but uh, um, you want to, to, to try again with the call? Yeah, I'm going to, let me hang up and call you guys right back. Okay. Hold on, y'all. <clears throat> that's that Digicel company that's in um, Jamaica. That's what they call. Okay. Are you guys hearing me now? Hello? Yeah. Are you hearing me now? Yeah, yeah. I'm hearing you. Hearing us okay? Yeah. All right. It's not like, it's, it's, it's not like you have wind blowing in your background. Um, yeah. We, we do. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Is, is that better now? Yes. A lot better. Now, right, what I was saying is, you said that they had a, a one to a 2,000 year plan, right? To um, pretty much get rid of us and um, acquire what they came and see that we have. Um, how much of their plan, how effective were their plan to divide the household of the indigenous men and women? Um, to oh, I break think it was a resounding success. <laughs> And to also break down the um the confidence level of the household or to implement insecurities between the man and the woman to why sometimes you'll see like the men, insecure men will feel threatened by a strong woman or a strong woman will feel threatened by uh, 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 a strong man. How much of that plan do you think played into that? I would say that, you know, colonization results in, in great insecurities because firstly, you have the insecurity of, of, of the people as a, as a whole, you know, where everybody really do have this, this low expectations of themselves as a people and, and believe that we can't accomplish anything or that we need all of these great resources. You know, as Alex had mentioned just now, you know, when the colonizers came, they came with nothing. You know, they, they, they really did come with nothing. They came on ships. What, what could they really carry on these ships? You know, so all of that, that, that is the biggest insecurity I think that our, our people face, you know, be having a low self-esteem, a low self-confidence in us as a people, you know, and then that, that carries over to the individual level where you find that a lot of people independently individually have a low self-esteem have a low image of themselves and you know this this could be as a result of the media the education system you know i know if, even in schools you know it's boys versus girls you know girl, what boys are from mars and and, and women girls are from mars. I don't, jupiter right <laughs> you, you, you find they always so girls are smart so girls 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 mature faster you know you, you hear all of that from your child right even in, in in class the girls are giving more attention and the boys are are, are, are portrayed as slow or lazy or just you know just want to play you know and you find that a lot of our our, our, our just just who we are as people is, is compartmentalized and and, and and placed in a negative context you know, once upon a time, it could just be that children need to run up and down sometimes. Children need to play. Children need to explore. Children need to experience nature. Even when you're a baby, you know, babies learn and, and interact with the world and experience with the world by putting things in their mouth, you know? That's true. So, 
you find that if, if even as, as young children, you know, the boys are restrained and when they want to go out and play and, and experience the outdoors, they're stereotyped, you know. Whenever any any any, any kind of young men try to get together, they're stereotyped, you know. I'm sure if, if, if a, a group of young men on the street, you know, it's going to uh, create some kind of suspicion. You know, you're going to wonder, oh, what are they doing? They're, they're up to no good, you know. So you find that there's just this, this, this division and this, this negative negative outlook on, on people, on, on, on themselves and the outlook that they have of other people, right? So I really do believe that, you know, this, this has caused a low self-esteem on, on, on several, uh, several fronts. And I think that we need to just overcome that with some positivity and, and, and things to be proud of, you know, like start to build and establish some more confidence, you know. So whether it be looking in, into your history and finding out about your people and, and, and the great culture and heritage that we have and learning more and, you know, if if you don't, and I need to say that a lot of people have a bad relationship with family because of really and truly some of them have bad experiences with some family members. But we shouldn't use these negative experience to really define our outlook on family, you know, because there are good people in this world. There are some amazing people in this world. And then, of course, because there is balance, there have to be bad people in this world. And I really do believe that some of the times they are here as a test to us. You know, some of these experiences that we have, they're, they're there as a test to us to build character. How are you going to be patient or how are you going to learn patience if you haven't gone through things that you've had to wait for? You know, how are you going to learn humility if you don't, if, if, if you, if you haven't experienced the negativities of, 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 what should I say? Not, not, not pride, but being conceited or arrogant. You know, if you haven't experienced, if you haven't experienced the negative side of, of, of arrogance, mm -hmm. you know, so I really do believe that a lot of these negative experiences, these negative people, the, just this negativity is a test and it will balance itself out. So yes, there are people with low self esteem, but it's our job to fix that. And you know, we can impact others by implementing change in ourselves. You know, so mm -hmm. let's start with ourselves, our families and our communities well, and see how we can help other people you, to have a you, high self esteem. You mentioned um you mentioned low self esteem. So what are some of the other herbal ways or, or spiritual ways could one then raise their self-esteem level, right? That's one part of the question. The next part is, do you think what is happening now today in, today, in today's society with this social distancing also is, seems to be the same strategy just put in a different format, so somewhat like how they will see our young men and women on the street and keep push them apart from each other or get them to consistently move from a spot when they're just relaxing, having conversation with each other. Do you think this is what this is in, in some form of way also as well? Now, go ahead. Well, I will answer the second question first, and I would say that when I heard this catchphrase, social distancing, I spoke out against it immediately because I studied social sciences at the University of West Indies, and in studying that, you realize that one of the first things that they teach you is that when, it, when they speak about social or socially, or for example, they're speaking about the entire fabric of a, a group of people and how those people interact with each other. So therefore, if you're going to say social distancing, you're saying that people should separate from each other mentally. And therefore, that mental separation, because you're saying 
they're telling you, oh, you, you know, COVID is here to stay. You have to live with it. So it means that if part of the whole COVID lingo is social distancing, it's to become a, a, a life's practice to separate from one another. And so therefore, you know, one asks a question, why didn't they say physical distancing? They know the difference and they know what the words mean. They know all about that. So why didn't they do it? And this is a legal matter. You know, everything that's put out there in the public is a legal matter. So why didn't they do it when law is very specific concerning the words that you're used? Well, the answer is plain on before us. They intend for us to be separate socially and to become distant from each other. Okay. I don't question that. I know that that's the, that's the case because they know what is right. And yet they persist in doing what is wrong. They did not make an amendment to the catchphrase. Um, oh, you know, concerning concerning the, the, the role of herbs in terms of we might as well just say mental illness. We have to recognize that originally our food was our medicine and our medicine was our food and it starts there because the thing is most of the foods that people are eating now are processed, are not natural. The cheapest foods that are available to the public now are processed unnatural foods. And you know, it, it all comes back down to the same question that we just asked when, when we were addressing the first question. And that is, don't they know better? Well, here's the thing. Wouldn't it cost more to make these processed foods, you know, in, in, a, in a lab than to mass produce in a factory to have these chemical raw materials necessary to to, to, to make these Frankenstein creations? I mean, just the electricity. Just the electricity alone and the manpower and all of those things that are required. In the, the raw materials, the base chemicals, they have to be synthesized as well. It's a whole lot of work, yet still that food is cheaper. Why is that? Well, these foods damage your immune system. They damage the, the excretory system. They damage the, the, what's that? the, the, the glandular system or the secretory system, mm -hmm. uh, which includes yeah, or, or lymphatic system. Right, and which includes the, the so-called pineal gland that everybody speaks of. The pineal gland is not the only gland in your body, and it is by far not the most important gland either. The thing is, is that... The endocrine Yes, endocrine system. The endocrine system. Right, it's been so long. But a biology teacher would kick me over. But um, in this endocrine system, you have many other glands. And the same things that affect the pineal gland affect all those other glands. So therefore, the foods that are calcifying the pineal gland are also calcifying your adrenal glands, also calcifying your tear ducts and your sweat ducts, your tear glands. You have uh, to, we have to take in, 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 into consideration our outlook on food. What exactly is food? You know, what, what, what is food supposed to do to our body? Well, it's supposed to nourish us and keep us alive. Right? What exactly is food supposed to be comprised of? Well, food should be comprised of nutrients, you know, things that our body has been designed to assimilate. So, you know, you have your carbohydrates, your proteins, your vitamins, your minerals, all of that stuff, you know. So, when we eat things that we can't readily identify what they are, you know, of course there's going to be adverse effects of them on our body, right? A lot of the times when we eat it, some of the times when you look at the ingredients, you see some things that you can't even pronounce, you don't know where they come from, what they're supposed to do, what purpose it even serve in the food. So I think that people, we just need to go back to basics, right? And just eat some natural food. Because these are the foods that's going to nourish our bodies, that's going to nourish our nervous system, 
that's going to nourish our immune system, that's going to nourish us holistically, where every single part of our body is getting what it's supposed to get, is getting what it needs to get to carry out its necessary functions. Exactly. And um, so the thing is, this question is a deep one. Before we even get to the role that herbs can play in a spiritual awakening, we have to first try to figure out why we're asleep. And that 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 portion of the journey is often forgotten about in pursuit of a, a fad, basically. You know, a fad telling us that we have to run to the Amazon jungle and drink ayahuasca because if we drink this thing, or we need to take mushrooms, or we need to take peyote cactus, or all of these things because they're going to awaken us and show us the way and all of that. What they what they neglect to tell you is that any good any good medicine man or woman in the Amazon is going to tell you first that you must do la dieta, which is the diet in Spanish, and what that is is a completely bare bones diet where you strip your diet of all salt, all sugar, all spice, anything that's going to give your food a strong flavor, and you bring it right down to basics, only certain fish that eat only plants, only animals that eat only plants, and you should only plant material outside of meat. And that's specific practitioner, but mm-hmm. someone said no meat at all. Exactly. And this is the thing, you know, we are chasing fats. We are chasing fats and not recognizing that our healing starts at the root. So we should not look at what the herbs can do because you should be eating with herbs. Your food should have herbs in it as seasoning. Thyme is an excellent herb. Thyme actually strengthens your immune system. A lot of people don't know that. Onion is an effective antibiotic. Uh, uh, All of these herbs that we should be cooking with, we need to stop neglecting them. We need to stop buying these powdered seasonings or seasoned salt, MSG, and all those things. We need to try to get back to the root. We need to try to get back to nature. Because, especially when we eat those things, what exactly do we think it's going to do for us? You know, what nutrient is seasoned salt, and how will it be assimilated or used by our bodies? A lot of, we, we, need, we need to really think on things like this, and if it is that we can't give a proper answer, then we need to re- really reconsider if we should even be consuming these substances in your heart. No. Let me ask you. Let me ask you guys something. Um, what was going through your your minds when you? decided this is it, we're going to create the West Indian Tribal Society. Um, what were you envisioning? What were the, the values um, that you want to be instilled within the society? We value community, we value progress, we value family, and we value future and an inheritance we we'll value the land and our connection to Mother Earth. And it is just our intention to strengthen those bonds and make sure that everybody is taken care of. Nobody is left behind. Because if we continue as things are going now and nobody does anything that poses a risk for a very dangerous future that I don't want to envision. And so we feel compelled. It's, it's, it's really our moral responsibility and we have to do this work and we encourage people who 
fearless way as well who who, who share this 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 responsibility with us as well you know who feel like this is a right path because we really do believe that what we are doing is the right thing we encourage you guys to join us on our journey because this work must be done and somebody has to do it and to, to build on that that Malkia said um when we really when we really look at life we must ask ourselves you know what are our aims you know what is the next step like where do i see myself in 10 years 20 years so on and so forth and you know when we envision what our future should be like our future should be one that uh, is filled with happiness is filled with joy as much as we can feel it you know is filled with togetherness is filled with eating good food is filled with having you know barbecues and get togethers you know with people who we get along with it should be filled with with swimming at the river and in the sea that's what should fill our future and so we were thinking about how we could get back to our peaceful existence and how and i'm not going to say utopian because we know we're going to be living in this world where there's so much suffering but we are people who have suffered and we think that we deserve happiness and i don't think that we we necessarily deserve anybody to give it to us but i believe that we deserve to take it for ourselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now <clears throat> why would without going into too much details why the idea of the trip to the south the motherland well i'm going to be very open very honest okay and i have to say that it was it was i who received a message in 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 many ways you know, one message, but in many different ways at many different times. Uh, and that message was clear in each way, in each in, in, in each method and mode of delivery that we were running out of time and that we had to go home. We have to go to the source. We have to go to our mother. Everybody is talking about the motherland. And it's only one motherland they're talking about. And I personally believe that all different kinds of people have their own motherland. I don't believe that life sprang from one source. I believe that it was several different sources. And because of that, and it, this has also been confirmed by messages that I've gotten, I, I don't ask anybody to believe me. But in, in my eyes, it, I'm sure. I know that the Amazon is our mother, our motherland. And so when I got that message, I shared it with the one who I see every day, and that's my wife. And we decided that the best thing that we could do was share it with others because we didn't know how we could achieve this. You know, even just to look at the flights, they're, they're expensive. And Colombia is not that far away, right? South America is right there, right? But, but this is the system. The system has, has become very prohibitive. But nonetheless, it has to be done. And we said, you know, let's share it with others maybe others will want to help us because you know one thing that we can be sure is that whatever we learn we will bring it back to teach those who are with us and who care about what it is that we have learned and so we decided to ask those closest to us those within the west indian tribal society you know what they thought about it and if they thought that it was a good idea and there was a unanimous agreement that this was important because 
the bigger the biggest problem that we're facing is that as a group as a community the online indigenous community we are we have a severe weakness and that weakness is about to be exploited by the colonizer and that is many of us lack culture and we believe that this would be brought forward to test and to be put up as a barrier for those who have lost their indigenous culture their original culture because of colonization and it will be used against them so that they will not be able to gain recognition so that they will not be able to recognize their rights and so we decided that the only way that we could stop that from happening and unfolding on our people because a lot of our people especially in the north they have found their grandparents and their great grandparents on those roads and all of these different kinds of roads so we don't have those in the caribbean but you know we love our family up north and they have lost a great deal of their culture so even though they are written down in documents a lot of their culture is lost and we may not have any means of proving that we are indigenous here on paper in their system but a lot of us here have managed to, to maintain a lot of culture nonetheless and so we have to find a way to bring it all together and so i thought that what may be best and we eventually all agreed that the west indian tribal society should have a formal mission in which we go to south america and acquire culture knowledge of spirituality food ways etc and bring it back to the people who need it because we are one people with them you know we and the ones in the south we are one people and it is colonization that that has divided us and you know through international borders these invisible borders have prevented us from sharing and 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 and, and you know experiencing with our with our relatives in the south and in, in other parts of the americas so it's really important that we make the effort to go and build back the bridges you know and rectify things because they want us to come they want us to know who we are because they know who we are as well right a lot of them have traditions passed down about us you know the ones that 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 that, that were separated the ones that because you have to understand that in the caribbean the colonizers came here first and we went through a great deal so it's important that we do something we men 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 those relationships men those bridges with the ones in the south and bring it back it's very important you see and because of the cold war and in some cases overt war mm -hmm. um that certain great so-called great international powers are waged against South america uh, we who are influenced by those international powers are influenced to believe that the south america is just poverty and it's just dictatorships and you know like a sort of orwellian 1984 kind of vibe where it's just these dictatorships where everything is closed and you know we're 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 made to feel like, oh you know those are the communists you know and stay far from them they hate liberty they hate freedom and a lot of our people would be so surprised to realize that a lot of the indigenous groups are original people groups they are completely independent in some of these countries and live by their law and when you speak to these people you have you have great masters of, of traditional medicine right now in south america and i've been asked by one of their representatives to let the world know that the elders have not forgotten us they have not forgotten what we've went through they are hearing about it those who did not know 
they are hearing. And we have been actually invited by one of these elders who has been trying to give back the, those heavily colonized peoples like us in the Caribbean, our traditional medicines, you know, our traditional link to the ancestors and to the creative force. And they are indeed dying to meet us as much as we are dying to meet them. And I realize that a lot of people, because of colonization, colonization has created a void in a lot of people, you know, because a lot of people have really been stripped from, from, from who they are, you know, have been, been prevented from, 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 you know, expressing themselves and, and their culture. And so you find that a lot of people, it, it, it's a, their identity has been stripped from them, you know, so... For example, a lot of people have this void where it concerns spirituality. So you find that they are naturally gravitated towards certain things, you know, just because just because there is a void. And if we could, you know, find out the parts that are missing, if we could paint the fuller picture. If we could just understand certain things, it would help a great deal. It would help a lot of us, you know, heal certain wounds that we have, certain experiences, you know, and, and not just with spirituality, but, you know, who we are is a part of us. It, it, it's in our DNA, it, it's our reading. And so, because of colonization, a lot of people have, have, have become out of sync, right? And they're naturally trying to find that sync. And so mm -hmm. you find a lot of people seeking in a lot of places. And if we could just find the right place, the right thing, the right energies to focus on, we could accomplish so much. And now, that's... You, you have um, folks who say, well... They can't, they don't, since so many, so much time has passed, what's the sense of looking up family lineage or why does family lineage even matter in today's society? Because we're, of a, we are of a mixed society. So why can't we all just be one um, in today's world and just share everything um, with everyone, right? <laughs> what do you say to that? And also... Um, to those who believe or feel that because they don't know their lineage, that it's not important to find out and, or believe that the records are just do away with. They're really, they're chopping away at the, um, the, the, the stream. Let me see something. All right, go, all right. E either one of you guys can answer. Go ahead. Yeah, man. So why can't we share with everybody else? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they're not sharing with us right a lot of people all right you know i know that because of the size of the so-called continental u.s it's a bit insular somebody can be insulated into their city or in their borough or in their area or their district uh, and maybe there are people there who look like them and so on and so forth and you know they kind of just everybody's kind of just in the same situation but in a place a small a small island like so-called jamaica you know we drive past the homes of the rich and famous every day we 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 a lot of us work in their companies a lot of us went to school with them right i went to a school at and even Malkia went to uh, school, high schools that we call them in Jamaica traditional high schools. And at those high schools, the class system and the caste system is well expressed. And you will see that there are some people of a particular ethnicity that are preferred over those of another ethnicity. And it's not to say that they system itself is a racial system because they have actually gone through great pains to, to erase the memory 
of separate races in this island. But you recognize that there are certain sets of people that have access to all of the factors of production. And why is that? It's simply because they were, for whatever reason, favored by the colonists. I mean, I guess the bigger reason is that, you know, we, the original peoples, they wanted to displace us so that they could get the land and they could move in those who they could control. So they could create a society of their own making from the start to the finish. And so that is why every August they celebrate Emancipation Day and they create this, this veneer, they create this atmosphere believing that our true history started at that point, our history as a nation started at that point. They're not discussing the first nations of the island. So for us who it's in our face every single day, it's hard to speak about sharing. We much rather to talk about how we can have our own. You hear it even in the dance hall songs, how we're going to get our own. And it's not that we can't share with other people because we're all human. We all share the earth. You know, look at the other day, there was this dust cloud that came from another continent over here. So we, we all share the earth. And we can identify with everyone's struggle. We can identify with everyone's fight against oppression because we know what it's like to be oppressed, right? So definitely, you can identify with other people, but there comes a time when you must, you must have your own group. You must have your own community. You must have your own like, family, right? Your own in group your own inner circle, right? You must have that because everybody needs somebody that has their backs, right? Everybody needs somebody that has their backs. Everybody needs support, emotional support. Everybody needs love. Like, I, I can't stress this a million times. Everybody needs love. So, in a structure where it's one size fits all, you, 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 you can't get you, you can't get that, that that experience, right? And for those folks out there that you know it's it, it's 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 happened, oppression has, has made them so numb, you know, it's 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 jaded them, right? I definitely understand and I can definitely empathize with anybody who has who has been jaded, but <laughs> I must say that it's incumbent upon all of us, you know, we are all important. Every single human being is all important. Everybody has a role to play. I do not believe in coincidences. I don't believe that things just happen. I think everything, everybody, and, you know, happens for a reason, is here for a reason. I, I believe things are structured, wonderfully structured. Right, and even if something you know may not look so bright right now, that's just because we can't see it from the next perspective, we, we, we can't see it from the other angle, the angle where we pass through it. Because a lot of times, you know, you might, might be going through some things and it might seem difficult, but you say, after you pass through it, you say, you say to yourself, so boy, you know, maybe it was a good thing that it happened, you know, because. Maybe if that never happened, then so and so and so. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I can definitely empathize with people who are jaded and, you know, just just upset and fed up and tired of oppression and, you know, have the, have the what are we going to do perspective. You know, a lot of people would ask, so what are we going to do? We can't do nothing, right? And I can see why. They would feel that way, but we must remember when the colonizers came, they had nothing. They came on our land, and we're still on our land. We're still here, right? Everything is still here. We are still here, and they came with nothing. I think we all just need to remember that. This is the way how my mother grew me. My mother always grew me, so don't think less of yourself. I'm not saying to be cocky. 
and not saying to be to be hyper or, 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 or prideful. Right? You must have a sense of esteem, you know, but don't be prideful. Right? But you must always have confidence in yourself. Because you see, especially when you believe in a creator, right? And when you believe that the creator can use anybody, right? If you, even, even if you're looking in, in all of the, 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 the literature of, of the traditional, the, not traditional, but universal religions like Christianity, Judaism, Islam, all of those world religions, right? You find that the people that were used were always some simple people, right? And if we believe that the earth is our mother and that every single part of this earth is connected, if we truly believe that, then we truly must believe that each and every one of us can be used and each and every one of us is a link in the chain. When we start to have that perspective, then we can start having some self-confidence in ourselves as a people. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. All right, so we're gonna um we're gonna wrap it up now. Uh, we're gonna let our brothers, uh, brother and sisters, say the closing um statements and you know what it is that they are looking for for not just now but for the future, um for uh, our people um and what it, what is it that they also wish for you the people out there you know the family out there also as well, all right. Well, I would have to say, you know, uh, first of all, uh, as usual, I'm honored to be on this platform and I'm honored to speak to our people in a capacity that I could be able to express my thoughts and my deepest ideas and, and my hopes and even my fears, you know, to the family out there because we all need to be able to share with one another. And I would say, that uh, I would like us collectively to start to wake up, start to realize what is important, to start to realize that every stone, every tree, every river, everything is connected. We're all connected and everything is important. No matter how simple it seems, you wouldn't see it there if it wasn't important. And this is all a design. And we must recognize that it is sacred and that we have a sacred responsibility to carry out the best stewardship and trusteeship of this estate that we can. Next thing that I like to see my people do is begin to educate themselves, to begin to equip themselves with knowledge because now the knowledge is freely available and you can pursue it to a high level, believe it or not, for free. Uh, mm -hmm. The further mm -hmm. thing that I would ask of the family out there, our people, is please to look out for the West Indian Tribal Society. Please to watch our activities carefully. We want to be as transparent to the people we love as possible. Um, if you see us making any mistakes, if you see us making any wrong moves, please please realize that we as trustees are accountable to you, the beneficiaries, and recognize that we have a fiduciary duty to do our utmost to make sure that you guys get the proper knowledge, proper education, you know, the proper history, you know, to know the proper food and all of those things. That's the, that's the mission that we took up and we chose that. And so we have become indebted to you guys because it is you who drive us who who we know that you need help and no one else is doing it so we just have to try and so just know that you know we love each and every one of you and we don't also like to ask you for your help you know in growing our mission in this pilgrimage that we're trying to make to south america it is probably the most important thing that we'll do for right now other than you know acquiring land for our village but it is that this mission is so vital because we need to be able to have a legacy of culture spirituality you know and and history oral histories and stories to pass to our children 
so that the next generation after us will wake up in the mornings with a different mindset, looking at the earth differently, seeing the sun that they see rising as sacred. The first birds that they hear chirping as sacred and their teachers. Seeing the plants and flowers that are blooming in the morning when they rise as their teachers, as their parents, you know, as their friends, as their brothers and sisters. You know, so please help us to make this pilgrimage. We'd like to, to start doing it yearly at some point, you know, because our family there want us around them. They want us to know them. They want us to learn from them because they know that they were, you know, colonized last. And, you know, they they actually they actually got it a, a bit better than we did. I mean, none of it was good. But they've managed to preserve a lot of their culture and a lot of their heritage. And they're willing to help us to get back there. So to clarify, that was through hard work and great sacrifices to our relatives in the South. Of course. You know, it, it's not that anything was really easy on them. It's just that they, they sacrificed. They made this sacrifice as part of their duty to the future generations of indigenous people. Yep. And so if they, because some of them, you know, some of them went to the, went hid in the jungle, some hid in the desert. Yep, some hit up in the cold mountains, right? And realizing that this, the arrival of these these men, these colonizers, was prophecy, and so a lot of them were prepared, and they knew that they had a a mission, and they knew that they were trustees over a great and wonderful estate that we are now here to inherit. And so. If they went through that sacrifice, I mean, come on, why can't we? Why can't we sacrifice them? Why, why, why can't we play our role and do our part just like they did? Exactly. Okay. So we're we're asking, we're asking the family out there, please, you know, have a look at our GoFundMe. Right? Please contribute what you can. It doesn't matter whatever it is, right? If 500 people give one dollar each, it's 500 dollars, right? And we don't really care much about their fiat system, but this is a system that we're a part of now, and we have to make our way around it. We can't say because of this system, we're not going to try to acquire the knowledge. So we're asking the family out there to help us, um, to help you, you know, because our aim is to bring that knowledge for your benefit. Right, no, not not just for us. And we really appreciate everybody's time. We really appreciate you guys for listening to us, for, for those of you who are here in this live and for those who will hear it later on. We really, really appreciate that you came to hear what we have to say because this really means a lot to us. You know, it's it, it's a sacred mission, to be honest. And so we really appreciate it, guys. Yeah. So just know that we over here, somebody over here in the islands, we're thinking about, you know, and we're sending some positive vibes to you guys. Right? Yeah, so, you know, give thanks for yeah. the opportunity as yeah, you to be on the platform next. No um, problem. It's always a pleasure to have you guys sleep. on here. It was a pleasure to have you guys. Appreciate what given so far and who have invested in, in our journey to come and we hope that many more people see the importance of the journey and invest whatever they can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I just would like to thank our brother and sister for being on the platform. It's always a pleasure to have them on here. It's always a pleasure to hear things from their perspective. And always a uh, pleasure for them to break down some of the um, information um, in the way of how they break it down. Um, again, it is it is very important that we get back to our ancestral ties. Um, no matter how displaced you might feel from it, once you start doing your genealogical research by tracing back the the names of your family back down in history. You're going to get closer and closer and have more and build a more uh, spiritual connection with them. And that shall get stronger. And you shall see 
why it is important to continue to do the research, to continue to do the genealogy, to continue to de do these things. Because when you look into your family, especially your family tree, your bloodline, um, a lot of the fallacies, falsehood that has been portrayed out there will come to light. Now, we have folks, you know, who are in the like the pro-black community for almost all their lives and they don't want to learn this information. Don't think that it's because, you know, it's because they strongly believe in what they believe in in the pro-black community. It's because they are fearful of the truth that's going to come out because they done invested all their life into that society where they're probably 70, 80 years old now. And they know that they're on their way to transcend to the next life. So they don't want to transcend knowing that, oh, damn, you know, I put all my life into this and it was a waste of time for me. You know, it was a waste of energy, waste of life for me. And thus to come find out the truth now when I'm like 80, 90 years old. I don't think negative of those ones, right? Because at least you have also regret as well. So I don't think negative of you. You know, I just, I feel sorry um, for you and for uh, the fact that you went through all those years being misled, all right? Um, the, to the ones who are out there that know who they are and continue to teach falsehood, you are part of the reason why society is the way it is today, to why our people are in the situation that they are in today, and to why they are so mentally confused and messed up the way how they are today, right? So to those ones that know who they are that still per per perpetrate the false identity of our people as this black African-American and all these other different titles, you are a part of what's happening right now. You know, um, but to brothers and sisters like Sister Malkia and Brother Alex um, for traveling this uh, path, this righteous path of being truthful to the history, to the ancestors, to the people, and has started uh, a, um, a society that has is building a foundation that will represent us in a positive light that will bring us to the forefront of all that is happening today. I applaud you, the, um, our brother and our sister, and I thank them. And I thank them again for inviting me on this journey and for now inviting you all on this journey also as well. And you know, I shall forever give them my um, support in anything that it is that they're looking to do for the betterment of our people. Of, of our children, of, you know, our future prodigies, prodig progenies. And, you know, and again, we just say for, on behalf of the subscribers and I, we say thank you to you guys, you know. Um, with that being said, I'm about to close this out. Um, if you can, um, donate to the GoFundMe, even if it's $5. Uh, to the GoFundMe, we will much appreciate it. Um, like I said, every cent will go towards um, uh, the journey um, to go into the South and putting into building up the um, the West Indian Tribal Society so that it can be a, a, a strong beacon to be a force to be reckoned with to represent you in the right light. We have many organizations out there, but none of them represent you. And if you can name me one that actually represents you, the, in, the original indigenous man and woman of this Western hemisphere of the Americas, right? If you can name me one that actually represents you without you have to, give it, have to go and give up your nationality, without you have to take some form of oath or pledge onto the corporation, then point me in that direction. Let me see. You know, it, there isn't any out there. This is it right here. This is the, this is, this is it. This is the society, the foundation right here, the West Indian tribal society. And, you know, again, it takes a village to raise a child. And this is a baby being uh, um, um, nurtured 
to becoming something strong and we ask for your help okay so like i said even if it's just five dollars um we'll much appreciate it and trust and believe it will go towards a good cause you know so again we thank you i thank you and i say peace love and light to everyone that joined us to everyone that is in the chat i say thank you thank you thank you and travel safe to you all um, nothing but positivity to you all, prosperity to you all, um, safety for you, your loved ones, and, you know, just be um, vigilant in these trying times. Do not let these demons out there on the road try to oppress you or dictate to you how you should live and operate in your daily life. That is up to you. You are the living, breathing, natural man and woman of this earth. Nothing outside of self should be able to di dictate to you how to move and live outside of self. That is not their job, okay? And so with that being said, I say peace, love, and light to you all. Honest, honest.